In this episode of OG55, we are talking about Disneyland Forward yet again, but an interesting article from Blog Mickey kind of got our imagine our, our creative juices flowing. We really want to talk about this. We're going to break down the article. Up next, I got the Italiano with me on this episode of OG55. Let's get it. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. Today, we're talking all about Disneyland Forward, Avatar. I know we've talked about it before and quite a bit, but this article was pretty interesting. It's pretty eye-opening. We're going to break it down. But before we do, I got George joined by Donald and Mickey behind him. George, how are you doing today, sir? <laughs> doing good. Uh, yeah, busy day today, but uh, nonetheless, I uh, definitely made it back, obviously, to have this uh juicy in-depth discussion with you as we always do here on og55 and uh yeah it's always a good time absolutely where can they find you on social media sir you can uh currently as of right now uh still find me on x formerly known as twitter at disney george you could also find me on instagram under the disney italiano and of course you can find me right here on my home base at orange grove 55 with citrus corner with all that sweet juicy but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There he is. There he is. All right, Italiano. Let's dive in. This is courtesy of Blog Mickey. Disneyland executives prepare for start of multi-decade Disneyland Forward project. All right. Hold on one second. Let's go down. Let's let's move mosey on down here. Okay. It says here the Disneyland Forward project is about to begin. And Disneyland executives recently met to discuss priorities as a new chapter of the resort begins. Disneyland president Ken Potrock recently met with leaders from across the Disneyland resort to discuss priorities to ensure the cast members feel supported as the expansion begins. Here is the interesting thing. The first theme park project for Disneyland forward will be the avatar land coming to D C a. Okay. So this is interesting, right now we've been speculating George Coco, Josh Yamaro mm -hmm. got on that D 23 stage. We were there, right? We heard him. Mm -hmm. Coco's not starting until 2026. And we've been saying, I mean, honestly, and I think it, it's it's a good educated guess to assume, well, in two years, um, it, he said they're starting. So, well, a little over a year, I guess. Um, maybe a year, year and a half. But, you know, to give them some time um, to, you know, for 2026, we assumed it would be for that Eastern Gateway. So maybe Coco's part of the Disneyland Forward project, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like that, though. It looks like it's just going to be Avatar. That's the first one. Now, Avatar is an entire land, so this this is going to take a significant time. Oh, I feel like pizza all of a sudden. Oh, man, that looked good. <laughs> ah, woo. Um, now, Avatar, Avatar Pandora is a huge project, so this is going to take a long time. Now, we're assuming if Pandora is going to open at the end of the five years like Josh promised, they would have to start on this the, the Eastern Gateway and this Avatar thing fairly soon. You know, this is a... You know, it's we only have like four or five years, but you don't really even have that long because, like I said, you've got to do the Eastern Gateway. Okay, so George, I'm gonna I'm gonna toss this question over to you. So we mm -hmm. have the symbol lot, which is definitely Disneyland Forward. Mm -hmm. Now there are rumors, heavy rumors, that Hollywood Land will be going away for Pandora. Now, this is interesting. So if it is Hollywood Land, if it is Hollywood Land then the bus load unload area is part of that equation as well. It has Correct. to because that's the only part of that only that's the only area in that area, basically that Disneyland forward land. What say you, I mean, what do you think? Does this change your mind in, in regards to how, how they're going to fit this into the park or are you more leaning towards Simba lot now? Because they're specifically saying the first project will be avatar for Disneyland forward. Well, that final line in that uh, in that little uh, paragraph right there is actually what caught my attention for the this for us to make this video because it it did strike my curiosity because when it says the first theme park project for Disneyland Forward would be Avatar, 
as you had just mentioned, we talked about it, you know, being that Coco is going to be starting its construction phases in 2026. Okay. Well, we're thinking, why would they wait to start Coco late? You know, right. and so we were kind of, hey, could that be part of Disneyland Forward? But after reading that sentence, it doesn't seem like the case. It seems like because we just recently did a uh, uh, a reaction video to Hey Bricky where he um, asked his audience like to kind of uh, vote of like what would be their least and and favorite spot for the Coco attraction to go, and one of and the least. Uh, uh areas was around the Hyperion and the uh the Hollywood land area and then I think the second to the last was the backlot area. So pretty much it's safe to say that that is not where Coco is going because as you said they're going to then utilize the bus load unload area which is part of Disneyland Forward because they have to wait until they finish the Eastern Gateway in order to open up that space. So right now, my money for Coco is either in the Paradise Gardens area, which I still don't think Disney right now is going to remove those attractions, even though that they probably could because they're very, you know, um, unrelatable to guess with, you know, as far as like what the IP goes. I personally feel like that Coco is going to go behind the... Uh, that Pixar promenade building where they used to have the, uh, yeah. the musicians play and everything. I'm not a huge fan of that, but you're probably right. You're probably right on that. Um, so avatar. Yeah. The only two spots would be Hollywood land only if they use if the bus they load. Use, correct. So they have to use the bus load unload area um, in order for that to, I mean, it, according to this, if it's going to be Disneyland forward, they have to use that bus load unload area. I think that's what it's really going to be because I think Disney is going to want to utilize the footprint of what's already there in the parks. Even though this would be the first project for Disneyland Forward because of the bus area, but they're still utilizing a bigger chunk of the footprint that's already made in the park. Right. I think once they do that and they uh, expand on Avengers Campus, they put Coco in the, the pier then I think the second half of the 10 years we'll start seeing beginning phases for like the Simba parking lot. It's, it's interesting. Now, is there, is there a possibility? I'm, I'm kind of throwing this out there. Well, maybe not because if you do, I was going to ask you, is there a possibility that, because it says here the first park project for Disneyland forward will be avatar. Is it possible they start the Avatar Land before Coco, but they're both Disneyland Forward um, projects? Now, Daddy Josh though said Coco starts in twenty twenty six, so in we would order have for this. They would have to start Avatar next year. Um, yes, we would have to get that Eastern Gateway up like right away and start Avatar, and then they can start subsequently with Coco. I mean, they, there's no rule against them working on them at the same time. Right. They did it with Disney. I DC just don't too. know if they're going to get the Eastern gateway and the parking structure up that quick. That's yeah. I, I just, it would be a year basically a little over a year maybe or so. Um, well, depending, I mean, it, it depends on when, when you're talking about 2026, um, it could be December. That's true too. That could be at the very back end of the year. Yeah. It's fascinating to me. I mean, it's weird to me because I mean, the, the, the rumors for, for at least recently have strongly pointed at Hollywood land. So if that holds, if it's going to be Hollywood land, then that bus area is for sure part of Pandora. So that brings a question too: do they need all of Hollywood land then? If you have those, I think we said, I think we figured it out on Google one time, didn't we? It was like six I acres or something like yes, that for that bus load unload area. So if you got six acres to work with, um, I mean, you would obviously need to, you need to get rid of a, a, a good chunk of Hollywood land, but you probably wouldn't need to get rid of the whole thing if you're including all that. Cause the avatar area in, in, in animal kingdom is only like nine or 10 acres, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Cause I mean, 
isn't it? I mean, yeah, if, if, if they really wanted to, they probably could get away with just the back lot area and the bus load area. So when you say the back lot, you mean when you go under the sign, this is Hollywood Studios. Yeah. So that whole back chunk with like Muppets, Hollywood and Dine, the sound stages, mm -hmm. all of that would be Avatar. All that would be Avatar plus the bus load unload area. Plus the bus load unload. So that would be Avatar. Mm -hmm. But then you would keep the, the rest of Hollywood land. That would include the Hyperion then. You would keep the Hyperion. Right. If that's the route that they wanted to go. It still depends on how big of a scope that this land is. Because they never really even said the acreage for this thing. See, we're just assuming that it's going to be the same acreage for... As how it is in Animal Kingdom. But technically... There's supposed to be two attractions in this land. We still don't even know what the second attraction is made up of. Right. And that might be why they're... If there's two attractions, they're going to keep some room for that expansion. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense if they kept a little bit of Hollywood land there, maybe, for, like, placemaking for, like, another ride, like like you're saying. It's fascinating. It's, it's the, thing with, the problem with this whole back area of Hollywood land is that it's very deceiving. Yeah. Because you walk in there and there's massive sound stages everywhere. So it feels this big. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you though, when you bulldoze those sound stages, it's gonna be a lot, it's gonna seem a lot bigger over there than than what it looks like now. Because you got that Hollywood and Dine building, which is an absolute monstrosity. You got Muppets, which is big, and you got that what used to be the Avengers like Walmart thing, <laughs> right? You know, it, that building is massive. Where you know where Millionaire used to be. Yes, I mean that's a massive building. And then you that got five. Then you got five or six acres behind that. But they want to build a, a, an elaborate boat ride, though. I, yeah. See, see that. Yeah. That's see, see. See. That's. See. That's where. I think more acreage is going to be needed than what it is compared at Animal Kingdom. Because they want a massive lagoon, so to speak, where the boat is supposedly based off of that concept art that the ride vehicle, the boat go, co goes in and out, outside, right. inside. And, you know, so that that's going to need a huge placemaker for that. The the uh, the uh, lagoon itself might cover the whole entire backlot area. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, I just don't know how this is going to work. I mean, but these are the only two options. The only if, two. if what they're saying, if what this, if this is accurate, if it still holds that Avatar is the first Disneyland forward project, there's only two options. I, I think, I think even to this point, Disney still doesn't even know themselves. I think that's why we didn't get no, we got confirmation that the, all these projects were going to happen at D23. Right. But we didn't get solidified answers to say, hey, here is where it's going. Because I feel like Disney didn't want to jump the gun that far along in case they have to retract something. So I think at the time when they ran out of time to make these announcements, they still didn't know where they were really wanting them to go. Yeah. And that's fine. I'm okay. With, look, I'm okay with them figuring it out. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I don't want them to rush this. Yeah. This is a big thing. I, if they don't know and they, they need to figure shit out mm -hmm. then figure shit out, take, take the time Disney, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, is I just, for me personally, um, I, I don't know what, what route they're going to go. See, the thing is, for me, Symbolot always felt like the easier option. It's a parking lot. Yeah. You have a fresh slate. It's massive. It's like 25 acres. You can do anything with it, you know, basically. It's, it's a canvas, right? Right. Hollywood Land, though, is not that. It's not a blank canvas. But, what, but what, I could see why it is appealing, why it's attractive to Disney. Because you kind of kill two birds with one stone by replacing it. Because Hollywood Land is the big black eye for DCA. It's really the, the worst part of the park. Right. Right? I mean, for by and large, it is. There's a lot of empty vacancies. There's not... I mean, now that Mission Breakout is part of Avengers Campus, it really isn't... Um, there's, like, literally nothing major in that area, attraction-wise, right? Could, could you potentially see, if Avatar does go into the Simba parking lot, then the whole entire Hollywood Land, including the back lot and... 
uh, um, the bus load area is for future Avengers Campus. Because at th there was a time where they were supposed to do a type of roller coaster style uh, e-ticket that was supposed to be, uh, what was it, based off of Captain America or something? That right. Was they were, be... It was going to be the Tron ride system, but for That's Captain right. America. Yeah. So, I mean, they already had plans in motion that they were going to get rid of Hollywood land for Marvel. And, you know, once they put avatar in Hollywood land, supposedly, then that cuts a limited amount of space for them to continue on with Marvel. It does. Yeah, it does. Now here's the thing what they could do. If they turn, if they turn most of Hollywood land into Pandora, right? So if you get basically everything from like the hype, well, that's tough. You could do. See, because we, we have to think Avengers Campus was not supposed to be where it currently is. They only took a Bugs Land out because the Eastern Gateway didn't go through. Right. So that whole area for Marvel plans change change you know disney acquired fox you know teamed up with james cameron very popular with uh pandora down at animal kingdom the the films are very successful why not put it in a disney another disney park but i'm just wondering of how much that they would want to kind of lock themselves in with avengers lock themselves in with with marvel because once they utilize that whole amount of land for avatar there's no more room for Marvel. But if you use, if you use, when you walk, when you walk into Hollywood land and on the right hand side, you have the animation building, which is another gargantuan structure. You know what I'm right. saying? That whole strip, the Disney junior thing, the animation building. And then at the very end of the street, you have Hyperion, right? Mm -hmm. So that whole strip and the Hyperion, if you save that. So is this possible where you save all of that for an Avengers expansion and everything to the left of that, to the left, to the left, right? As, <laughs> uh, to the left of that would be Pandora. So maybe it's not an all or nothing thing. Maybe part of it, what I'm trying to say, maybe part of it, this this kind of like this, this right side will be earmarked for Avengers expansion and everything to the left of that is going to be all Pandora. You, you could do that as long as two things are in play. One, the strip of the Hollywood land that you're walking down with... Um, uh, all the buildings and everything. Now, the one side actually is connected to Avengers Campus on the other side. Yes. So they can't necessarily take those buildings out without re replacing what is beyond what they use for Avengers Campus. Now, as far as for the Hyperion, that's a big, big chunk of real estate. So they could probably get a maybe another, right you know, depending on if they wanted to put another attraction, they might be able to get a fifth. Uh, attraction and and then again it all depends on how big that they want pandora I, I know i know and it's hard to visualize the acreage is there for a pandora uh, about the size of, of of animal kingdoms we figured it out on google the yeah. acreage is there but for me the space is one thing how it all fits into the bigger puzzle though is a whole nother conversation do we know the acreage amount of how big Pirates is over in Shanghai? I'm not sure, but we should do a show on that. I can look into that. We should do a show on that because that that's what ours is going to be, basically, our yeah. our Pandora ride. But the, my issue is what I'm trying to get at here when it, when it comes to like how it fits into the bigger puzzle. When you when you when you when you go into the park, you go down Buena Vista Street, and you make you make a left. Mm -hmm. What, how is this going to be? Like, I don't understand. What are you, are you just going to go straight into Pandora? The transition then, for me still seems lost in translation. It really there, does. There's got to be, and see, this is the problem too. We've only seen two of the, of the move, two out of the four movies it's going to be based on, right? They're, they're, they're five. They're, oh, it's based on five movies. Mm -hmm. So there's three more movies. I mm -hmm. see. That's the thing. I, there, it, there could be something in those movies, the next three films, that either makes sense for it to be in California Avenger. Again, 
it's a it's a stretch, but you never know. And it there also could be some sort of um city or something that that is in one of these sequels on Earth in California or something that that oh okay obviously that's what that's going to be right like mm-hmm. that's why it's so hard to kind of predict this because we don't know we don't know what's in these n- upcoming movies correct and Imagineering even said this land is not just based off a of way of water it's going to be based off a of way of water way of water excuse me fire and ash and the subsequent movies after that. So that's why whenever they start on this project, this is going to be one of the last projects to be completed because in order for the land to make sense, it has to probably open by the time avatar five is set to release. Right. Gosh, that's crazy, man. Now I wonder how many people even at Imagineering know the full plan because think of it this way, George, James Cameron Mm -hmm. is a filmmaker Yep. He's kind of like a George Lucas. Is he going to be sharing all these, all, all the, all the story beats to these, to these future films, which is every Imagineer in the building? Well, because Cameron even changes things up. You I'm know, saying. It, it took, it took Way of Water to be released kind of late. You know, put on a little bit of the back burner it, because it, he kept on changing things up. And that might be why, and the reason why I'm saying that, that might be why we're not hearing much in regards to what it's going to be, because a lot of this stuff is going to be based on movies that aren't out yet, and Cameron is very protective of that kind of thing. Remember, this isn't just about a park. This right. is this is James Cameron's movies. Correct. And he's got a, he's how he, he I'm sure he, there there's an interest on his part to sort of protect leaks in that regard. You know what I'm saying? Correct. As of right now, it's saying that Avatar 4 is set to release in 2029, and Avatar 5, the last of the Avatar saga, is set to release 2031. See? 2031. Which one is that? Number 5. Number 4 comes out in 2029. Okay, so this... Okay, so Josh said five years. So I'm assuming the five years starts in 2025, though. Okay, we're kind of at the end of... Right. right when i mean i don't know yeah because that's when everything really is going to start yeah so, so five so, years from 2025 so 2030 so a year before the final film so right in that sweet spot right after avatar 4 is over but right before number five begins right so there might be very minimal references to the fifth movie yeah but the other sequel is probably significant. So I, I just don't know that's why it's so hard to predict this because we don't know the story beats the elements that are in these other sequels that could, if we knew those story beats, if we knew what was going to happen, it might be able to help us kind of figure out the direction they're going to go in. Right. But we're going on based off two movies when we have three other movies that this land's based on. And like we said, and again, we don't know, we're guessing, but there could be a California component. They go back to earth or some shit like that. We just don't know. There could be okay. some version of Los Angeles, like way out in the future that you see in the fourth movie. Oh, exactly. okay. That's the case. That's what they're probably going to build there, and that's why they can't open the land yet until it makes sense to in the movie. Because if they release it now, which obviously they can't, because it takes time, right, right. But if they were to release it, we we would be looking at it like, what the hell is this? Like, right, exactly. You know, so even if the movie isn't opened yet in theaters, but if we see the previews and we kind of get the plot synopsis of what it's about then it would make sense that they could say, hey, this is a cross-promotion to market both the film and the theme park land. Oh, yeah. No, and, and Bob Iger is all about that. He's going to do that. Look what he did with Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. I know a lot of fans don't like Galaxy's Edge because it's the sequel trilogy, and I understand that. But Bob Iger definitely is going to, like, and they've already admitted it, but they're basing these on the new movies. Right. You know, I mean, this is what they do. This is that flywheel, that synergy machine. You know what I'm saying? It's all part of promoting these films and, and it's probably going to be the big lead up to the fifth one and all that stuff. So it's fascinating, bro. I, I just, I'm, I'm itching to know where, where I'm itching to know where this is going to go. Um, I'm, if I was a betting man, I, I would say Hollywood land. They're just going to, they're just going to push it out into that, into that bus load area. That's what I'm. That's what my gut's telling me. But I don't know how far out it's going to encroach on the current Hollywood land outside of that little 
that little nook, you know? Yeah. Is it going to get into the, 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 like the street area? Is it going to get go further? Is it going to take down the Hyperion? Or is that side going to be Avengers? Or what's going to happen? I, I agree with you. I feel like that it, that's where it's going to go. Again, just not know how much and, and where the placement is. But I think Disney is going to want to utilize all the main footprint that's already within the park before they touch the Simba parking lot. Cause once they touch the Simba parking lot game over, it's game over. They're going to have to keep on utilizing it and, and thinking of new things where then Hollywood land, the one section of the park that is still in DCA 1.0 mode. Yeah. And it's sitting there stagnant with, with no look major attraction. Happened. Exactly. Look what happened with Tomorrowland. After it gets let, after it get, excuse me, after it gets let go, after so long, you kind of have to leave it behind because you have to move forward with everything else. So honestly, I would nip it in the butt now. And again, I'm not saying half-ass it. I'm not saying Mickey Moss it. No pun intended. Um, but I would focus on refixing the inner parts of the park that always already exists before touching the symbol lot yeah no i mean it makes sense it does make sense to touch the existing park especially when you have an area an eyesore a black eye like hollywood land yeah. it's even worse than tomorrowland because at least tomorrowland has things like space mountain hollywood exactly. has nothing like that so that's why i was saying earlier it's attractive for disney to go into hollywood land because even though it's a, it's a bigger pain in the ass with the construction having to having to demolish and then build it kind of, it kills two birds with one stone. Now you're improving the area and you're getting rid of the problem area. Exactly. And you're putting a major e-ticket back there. So they're going to, it's likely going to be Hollywood land. It's just going to be a big question mark as to how this whole thing fits into the equation and how it fits into the theme. And are they going to keep the theme? Is it going to be Disney cinematic adventure now? What are they going to do with this whole thing? And kind of going a little bit back with Coco, because I know we've been talking about that a lot too. The other reason why I'm thinking that it now, especially it is going to go behind the pier is because if they end up closing down Paradise Gardens or that section for right. Coco, they're going to have two separate parts of the park on opposite ends. That's going to be completely blocked off with construction walls. And I know Disney has done that before. They did it with Buena Vista Street and they did it with Cars Land. They, yeah, DCA 2.0, that, I mean, it was, I remember DCA 2.0, that you, they, we didn't even have an entrance to the park. You had to go through that little that little um, mm -hmm. alleyway behind, uh, behind Soren. You yeah. entered like basically in downtown Disney for a while. Basically, yeah. I mean, it I was crazy that. leading up to that. I mean, the, the park was in shambles for years. So I don't know if Disney is willing to do that again as far as like, because both, at some point, both projects are going to cross in time when, you know, they start constructing it. But if they do it behind the pier with it Coco, affect. it doesn't affect no park operations. Not Well, it does affect the parade, though. It affects the parade, but I mean, in terms of like guests and when, stuff. Now it would only affect the parade, is it? Because they had the parade for when they had the Pixar Fest. Pixar Fest is over. Um, they usually hold the parades like for like the holiday wise, but as of right now, there's no regular parade going on at DCA unless they <laughs> they make the bold decision of bringing back. Uh, paint the night which may go back into disneyland for the 70th yeah um, uh, yeah probably for disneyland but and that's a whole nother conversation too we, we've touched upon it with the parades at dca i mean uh, look, assuming um pandora goes over in hollywood land and assuming it's going to take over most of it and assuming coco goes behind pixar pier you have to reevaluate your parade route completely yeah, because both projects hinder that yeah, on both ends. Yeah. <laughs> and so you got to make a completely new parade route. Maybe it'll go through Cars Land. I mean, that's a possibility. Go through Cars Land and then, I, I don't know. I mean, then you can hang a left and then maybe they'll figure out another another way to where to put the parade when it when it ends. I don't, I don't know. But then they would also have to even reroute the whole backstage area for the floats because that's where Coco right. would go. 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Are they gonna? And maybe it's like what what Bricky was saying in his video. Maybe they'll incorporate the parade building into the show building somehow for Coco. You know, that's true. Um, I, I I'm not really sure. I, there's so many question marks with it. This is why I wish at D23 he got up there and he showed us where it is on the map. Yeah, and like just how does it connect? You know what I'm saying? Like where does it go, bro? Just tell us where it goes. Cause this is yeah. Cause uh, especially with Coco, we only got, we didn't even get an aerial view of like what it's going to look you like. You got a shot indoors. That's it. One piece we, of concept art. We didn't it. get the outdoor stuff. Nope. And with uh, avatar, we got both to be fair. We got both. We got, we got a lot of outside aerial shots. We got a lot of indoor stuff, some spooky shots, actually some kind of scary elements in that attraction, which is interesting, yeah. but we didn't get anything in terms of like zoom out. And like seeing where it lays in the park. And like you said, they might not know either. So, yeah. but, but that blog Mickey though, um, article that we pulled up earlier mm -hmm. mentions in there that it, it was, it was heavily indicated that, that they needed Disneyland forward to do Pandora. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. So it, it's, it's, it's gotta be that bus load area. They, they, they probably needed that to fit it in there and do whatever else they wanted to do with that area. And they got it. Because so. if you got to remember too, Iger was saying that they don't want to utilize all the expansion pads right away because future IP or future films or what have you could be utilized for that. So a lot of people are thinking, Oh yeah, just put this, 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 and this in the Simba parking lot and call it a day. That's not going to happen. This right. is supposed to be a 40 year project or 30 year or whatever. 30 year. Yeah. This yeah. is a future forward, no pun intended, future forward um, project. And you want it to be that you don't want, I know a lot of fans were, were complaining and rolling their eyes. Oh gosh, you know, 30 years, I'm going to be 65 when this opens or whatever, but you don't want, you don't want to go through all this trouble to get all this land and have it and have it all used up in six years. Exactly. You, know, you, you want to have decades of expansions. It, you know possible there you don't you don't want to just you know blow your whole wad in in, in one shot you know what i'm saying <laughs> lack of a better analogy but you know you just don't you want to space this stuff out both for business reasons or especially business reasons and just and just for us fans too we want years of investment we don't want everything at once that doesn't make any sense but but at the same time you don't want to be shooting blanks yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You don't want to shoot blanks. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But we'll see, George. I don't know. We'll see. So Avatar is the first Disneyland Forward project, which I mean, that kind of narrows it down, but it kind of doesn't because we were kind of already thinking it was going to go in these two spots. Mm -hmm. But it all it kind of does for me, though, is kind of confirm that the bus load area, if they are using Hollywood land, is in part is part of this equation. And it also narrows down the fact with Coco, it's either going to be behind the pier or in paradise gardens behind the pier yeah yeah or paradise Gardens. It'll because be they they're they they're not going to use coco for uh uh in the simba parking lot because that's disneyland forward they're not going to put it in the back lot extending over to the bus area because that's disneyland forward yeah and and the thing too with coco is that if he would have announced a latin area like a whole land like a 10 acre latin land mm. i would have been more I would have been wondering more. Okay, where's Coco going? It could go in the symbol lot then, because we're building a land. Right. But with one attraction, very unlikely they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna put one ride <laughs> over there. They're just it's just too much of a of an issue getting there over the bridge, and then for one ride, nah. And they're not building a land, as far as we know, they're not building a land. Now they might build a little courtyard in front of it to sort of set the tone a little bit, like they do with Mission Breakout. You know what I'm saying? Right. But in terms of like a land land, I, nah, they're not doing that. So it's, yeah, it's probably that Pixar pier thing. And that's really, that whole thing was made for that. It, that's, that's been a placemaker for years mm -hmm. for a new attraction. So we'll see. We'll see how they work it out with the parades. We'll see how they do it. I don't know. It's going to be fun to watch though, dude. I just hope you predicted in the show recently that you think they're going to start announcing where and getting those details at the, after the first of the year. I believe so. Yeah. I think it's going to be after the first of the year after all the holidays and the festivities between Halloween and Christmas are all done. Those are big months for Disney. 
um, with all the special events with Oogie Boogie Bash and Mickey and Minnie's Not So Scary Halloween Party and uh, the, uh, the the holiday Christmas festivities on both coasts. So I think after the holidays are over, 2025 kicks in. And that's when Josh said that that's when the construction will be starting with these projects. So they're going to have to make those announcements before they actually start breaking ground. Yeah. It's fascinating, bro. It's fascinating. It, it, exciting stuff. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pumped. This is what I live for. I live for this stuff, dude. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it all shakes out. And obviously everybody at home will keep you updated. Once we hear anything, we're going to do a video on it a hundred percent. But George, uh, any final thoughts today before we, uh, before we skedaddle? Uh, as I have always said, uh, I love talking this stuff. Um, my, my curiosity, uh, juices flow, my optimism, you know, just kind of gets like, you know, all pumped up, v very positive stuff going on. And, uh, I can't wait to see the transformation when it goes from literally nothing to something and rerouting everything. And I think in time, well, I'm not going to say think, I know in time that DCA is going to look very different than what we, we're used to seeing it now. Oh, absolutely. DCA is going to be a, a new, a new, a new version of this park. And we dare I say DCA 3.0, right? Yeah. Um, that's pretty much what we're looking at here. I mean, with, a, with, a with a land, like Pandora, we're, we're assuming it's going to be the same size as or close to as the one in Florida. Mm -hmm. Just the addition of that alone changes everything for DCA. But then the possibility they're replacing Hollywood Land for that changes the whole fabric and identity of the park. Yeah, it does. I mean, so this is a major, major, major change. It might even be more of a change depending on how, what they do with it, it might be more of a change in 2.0 because 2.0, they didn't change the name. Well, they, they took off the apostrophe S on Disney's right. Disney California adventure. But if avatar changes the theme of the park, this is a bigger change than 2.0. Yeah. Because even with the expansion of Avengers campus and adding Coco possibly to the pier, you're just expanding on things that are already existing. Right. Avatar is nowhere to be found in DCA, but they're going to put a massive new land replacing possibly one of the first original lands that opened with the park back in 2001. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be so weird, bro. I'm telling you to, to not have Hollywood land there and to, and to look over there and it's a bunch of rock work and waterfalls. That's going to change the whole vibe of DCA because that's going to be one of your first impressions into this park now. Hollywood land isn't that far into DCA. I mean, you only walk down that little Buena Vista street and boom, there it is on your left. Yeah. So it's going to be one of your first impressions of DCA is going to be this new avatar land. Yeah. That's significant. That's significant. And what about nighttime? That's going to be fucking crazy, bro. Cause avatar at night is nuts. It is. And it's a shame that we don't even have that anymore at animal kingdom, but at DCA we will. So you'll have it every night. I mean, and I even life. think even the, uh, the park operation times will then change too, because DCA is always used to closing earlier than Disneyland. Yeah. You know, usually on some nights it closes at nine. Sometimes it closes at 10. I think after, honestly, after Avatar, after Coco, after the expansion of uh, Avengers Campus, I could possibly see DCA starting to stay open later till 11 o'clock midnight. It might. It absolutely might. Yeah, DCA needs this. They need a big family ride, so this is going to be good for it. But uh, we shall see, George. We shall see. We'll keep everybody updated. But the Italiano, if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you can find me right here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner. With all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. And you can find me. I mean, look, I am on X, but I am I am stepping back from X. I'm not happy with the way Elon. I've made no bones about it. I don't like how Elon is running that website or app, whatever. I think it's become a total cesspool, more of a cesspool than it used to be. Um, so I'm like just not even on it as much anymore. So I, you can find me on Instagram, though. I'm going to be more active on there and so just go to instagram orange grove 55 you'll find me there or you can find me here either way 
But uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can. I'll be. I mean, I I have an account. I'm not going to get rid of my account, but I'm just not going to be on it as much. So I'm also on Threads too. If you want to follow me on Threads, so check it out. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all so so much for watching this episode of OG Fifty Five, and until the next time, see you later.